In the early 1920s, a businessman in Boston had a realization. Everybody wants to get rich without doing any work. So this businessman came up with a brilliant idea to make a lot of money. And like all good financiers, he promised to make those around him really rich too. The businessman told his investors he was buying discounted coupons in foreign countries and making money reselling them in the US. There was a middleman opportunity that he claimed was totally safe and guaranteed a return. The businessman promised his investors a 50% profit in 45 days or 100% in 90 days. What this businessman was doing was paying the people who got in early with the money for the people who got in later. Those later investors, excited by hearing about a guaranteed high return investment, were left holding the bag. That businessman was named Charles Ponzi. His name has become synonymous with these sorts of schemes. His Ponzi scheme made millions of dollars in just a few months. But such a con can only go on for so long. Eventually you run out of other people's money. And for Ponzi, when that happens, you go to jail. A hundred years later, a new bunch of wealthy investors say they too have a brilliant way to make you a lot of money. They promise to make you really, really rich. The best part is, they say, the returns are guaranteed. Anyone can buy with any amount of money. It's called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital token with no physical or government backing that's run by a global decentralized network of computers. These computers keep track of every Bitcoin transaction and can move Bitcoins easily from one user to another. There are a limited number of Bitcoins in the world, 21 million, 19 million of which have already been mined. These mining rigs are large systems of computers which perform complex calculations, expending huge amounts of energy to create new Bitcoins. Massive Bitcoin mining farms are set up in places like Siberia and northeastern China, where people take advantage of cheap electricity in massive wasteful facilities. But how Bitcoin works doesn't really matter that much. All of the stuff you hear about peer-to-peer -peer technology and the blockchain really only explains how Bitcoin works as a currency. But despite the name, Bitcoin isn't really used much as a currency at all. When people buy Bitcoin, they rarely use it to buy goods and services. They're really buying access to a Ponzi scheme. Only 1.3% of Bitcoin's economic activity is in merchant transactions. The rest is speculation. People buying it just because they think it will go up. And the more it's used in speculation, the less incentive people have to actually use it as a currency. Why buy something with Bitcoin when you can hold it and make some easy money? That's why the peak of Bitcoin being used to buy things was actually back in 2017, before its price really took off. And a currency should be stable in value, not bounce all over the place the way Bitcoin does. Rises are nice, but Bitcoin also falls a lot. If you want to speculate, that's fine, that's your own business. But you don't want the value of your checking account to gyrate wildly and unpredictably just because Elon Musk has tweeted about it. If you have friends or relatives who are into cryptocurrency, you know that the reason that people are into Bitcoin is because they think it can make them a lot of money. Because Bitcoin is just a digital token without any inherent value, they're not really making an investment. They're engaging in a financial betting game. Anything you invest in Bitcoin or Ethereum or Dogecoin just goes into the pocket of the previous holder. There's no real income generating asset behind it. What they're betting on is that other people will bet on it and the value will keep going up. If more people are joining the market, you can make money. You're not a sucker if the person next in line is a sucker too. And as long as you can make it out on time, the next guy is left holding the bag. The good news for these gamblers is that there are a lot of suckers in the world. The bad news is that eventually you run out of suckers. So to keep the scam running as long as they can, the wealthy proponents of Bitcoin say that it's changing the world. They say that Bitcoin is going to replace fiat currencies like the dollar. They say that it's going to undermine cruel dictatorships and greedy banks and help usher in a libertarian utopia of privacy and security. And most importantly, they say what every scam artist has said since the beginning of time. Get in right now and you'll make quick and easy money. Don't miss out on this once in a lifetime opportunity. And for the last few years, they've actually been right. If you'd spent $100 on buying shares of Apple in January 2016, you'd have about 540 bucks now. If you spent that $100 on Bitcoin, then you'd have made more than $9,000. But that doesn't mean that Bitcoin is working. It means that a lot of people have fallen for the scam. And the more people who buy it, the more the price fluctuates and the less usable it is as a currency. 
The success of Bitcoin as a speculative commodity has made it socially useless. You'd actually have made just as much money buying a parody cryptocurrency called Dogecoin that makes none of the grandiose claims that Bitcoin does. In fact, it explicitly started as a joke. Meanwhile, as more and more people speculate on Bitcoin, it consumes more and more electricity and emits more and more carbon. Because of how complex Bitcoin transactions are, they consume an incredible amount of power. One Bitcoin transaction consumes more electricity than the average American household does in a month. Bitcoin as a whole consumes more electricity than entire countries, Venezuela, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, and the Philippines. If Bitcoin ever were to be widely adopted, it would consume many times more energy than is produced in the world today. Bitcoin isn't useful at all, except maybe as a symbol of how capitalism has changed. From something that could once build factories and transcontinental railroads, to a system of pure speculation totally divorced from the real world. Look at this system. Millions of computers emitting huge amounts of carbon making pointless calculations in order to gain access to a digital token with no actual use. All while the infrastructure crumbles and people go hungry. This is a terrible way to organize a society. But because Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme without any benefit to society does not mean it's going away. Bitcoin has become a culture, an identity. Amid the vast meaninglessness of a society in decline, a lot of people find value in it. In a world where traditional forms of identity are in decline, family, unions, religion, new ones like cryptocurrencies spring up to take their place. The fact that so many lonely, atomized people find community and meaning in Bitcoin means that for the people at the very top, people with millions or even billions of dollars, there's a ready and willing community of suckers to exploit. You can still make money off cryptocurrencies. In an age of low wages and mass underemployment, people will always be lured by the promise of getting rich quick. But there will always be somebody left holding the bag. And it could very well be you. In essence, Bitcoin is a gamble. Gambling can be fun at low stakes with friends. But the people trying to sell you Bitcoin aren't your friends. No matter what you tell yourself, you're just gambling. Not that an asset has value, but that the person next in line is more gullible than you. This is Doug Henwood, author of Wall Street for the Gravel Institute.